Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Wednesday, March 20th, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So, continuing with this uh, new uh, little series on the parables, um, we have the follow-up, uh, the immediate follow-up, at least in, in Matthew's gospel, uh, to the parable of the sower, uh, which brings us to the parable of the weeds. So this comes, like I said, right after the parable of the sower. Um, only Matthew's gospel contains this one. So uh, we are looking at uh, Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. And then the explanation that he gives is Matthew 13, verses 36 to 43. So what do we have here? He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. And if we jump down a little bit, <laughs> it says, Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and will gather out of, the, and will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. All righty. So um, we move into um, from a, um, a parable that deals with kind of how life um, living in faith is, you know, how faith kind of um, works now to um, a view of what's going to happen at the end of the age. Kind of, well, a view to what's happening now, but then what's going to ultimately happen uh, when Jesus returns. So this is an um, eschatological focused um, parable and eschatology is just um, the, the study of the end. So when we re whenever someone may, might refer to something being, um, have an eschatological focus, it means that it's focusing on the end times, the, the last day, Jesus' return, all that fancy word. <laughs> all right, so this one, um, thankfully, again, Jesus gives us a explanation and it's very straightforward that, um, you know, actually this leads out from the parable of the sower in which we see that, you know, the, the, the seed, the word goes out, you know, it's broadcast all over and, and it does take root, but there are dangers, you know, the, the devil comes and, and tries to snatch it away. Um, people, their own sinful flesh, um, get uh, distracted with other things. And so even though, um, God's word does exactly what it, intends to do and, and does not return to him void, as we mentioned yesterday, um, you know, there are dangers out there for, you know, for the living out of our faith. So now this um, kind of continues that, um, that idea that, you know, this, how we live in faith is, you know, yes, it's good seed. You know, we, we are, we are the good seed that is planted. We're, we're, we've sprung up, um, you know, we're, we're, we're bearing fruit. This is all good. Um, however, while we are uh, doing this, while we're sprouting up and bearing good fruit, um, there are 
weeds among us. You know, that there are sons of the evil one that are planted and they are growing up alongside. So, um, you know, and that presents, you know, a, a, a danger to our faith, you know, the, the um, potential or possibility that we would be led astray, that, um, that, uh, that influence would be bad for us. Um, we get that from the, the angels who, who notice what happened and they go to God and say, Hey, look, there's weeds. <laughs> this is not good. Should we pull them out? Um, indicating that, you know, there, there is, there's still danger to be living surrounded by sin. Even if you are a good seed planted in good soil, um, living in a broken, sinful world surrounded by sin is, is not the way it's supposed to be. And it, it does I mean, I think we can all agree that it, it makes life challenging, difficult, um, you know, and, and that's just the way it is. And the the easy answer for the the angels who are seeing this is, well, let's let's pull them out, pull those weeds, get rid of them. Um, but God says no. He says let them be. We'll take care of it at the end. Um, the the reasoning being that He doesn't want to uproot any of the wheat alongside. Or, or with the wheat. So there's, you know, he doesn't want any of the wheat to be be damaged while trying to just weed out the, weed out the wheat. There you go. <laughs> um, so we get um, a, a nice picture in this parable of the, the nature of, of God. Um, and this, this definitely, um, you know, it helps to answer the question of, you know, why, why is there still so much evil? It's like, the question is that why doesn't God do something about it? Um, you know, God is all powerful, certainly. Why can't he just come and, and take out, take out all these, this sin? Why can't he, he come in and do his gardening right now and, and take care of this all? Why do we have to endure um, this, all the evil around us when, when, you know, the easy solution is God just come out, come down and, and take care of it. And, you know, we don't get a, a direct answer to that question. You know, the, the answer to, to why is there evil? We, we don't get that direct question. We, we just get turned back and say, you know, there is, um, you know, this is a question that has bedeviled people for, for ever since there've been people. <laughs> and, um, quite often this is a, a, a dilemma that, um, causes a lot of people to struggle and, and even begin to doubt, um, because they just don't understand how this could possibly be. And we don't get a satisfying answer. You know, we, our answer is like the angels. Well, why can't you just come and, and take care of this? It's easy, God. Why can't you do it? Um, the problem with that approach is that we're not God. <laughs> we don't see the whole picture. It's not our plan. Um, you know, it's, it's a similar kind of question is why did Jesus have to die? Why did it have to be that way? Why did it have to be the cross? Um, and the the answer is because that's the way. <laughs> um, that is the way that that God has chosen to solve our problem, um, to present our problem, <laughs> and or take that problem and place it all upon His Son up on the cross, so He dies and forgives us. Um, now we still live in this broken, sinful world. We still live in a world of weeds. Um, but we are, we are saved from it last day when the angels come and, and pull, do this harvest, then it will be done and we will be separated and, and, and things will be as they should be. But until then we live in these challenges and these difficulties. Um, and so the, the answer that is given in this parable, um, to why, why I say it's unsatisfying to us is that we have the, the, the answer that we think it should be. The answer that God gives us is because I'm, I, I don't want to uproot, you know, I don't want ha I don't want to damage, <laughs> you know, my, my chosen, I don't want to damage my children. I don't want to cause harm and, and, and pain upon them. In fact, he's, he's showing mercy over even the weeds at this point, you know, at the end, there's, there's the day of judgment there's a separation, but until then God is not acting rashly. He's not going to just, um, move in swiftly and say, okay, Oh, you're a weed. You're out of there. He's patient. He's showing mercy. He's, um, you know, the, the, this little, it doesn't really work with the, the, uh, the parable here. Um, this would be a, a, a different section, but, you know, allowing the, the unbeliever 
the opportunity, the chance to receive the gospel, to repent and be saved. Um, why I say it doesn't really fit in this parable is because then the, the weeds would somehow become wheat by, you know, repenting. And like it doesn't fit in the parable, but does fit in, in uh, um, what uh, Scripture teaches. So um, God is patient. God is loving. Um, God does not want to um, harm us in the pursuit of uh, punishing evil. And the, the reason, you know, you might think of that like, well, how, how would we be harmed? Um, well, though that we are, though we are good seed and good fruit comes, is springing up from it, uh, we have, you know, we, we got a bit of weed in us too. Um, we've got, uh, um, we've got evil in us. We, we are all sinners. Um, though we are that good seed that, that he has planted, that he has made spring up, um, you know, we are still struggling with our own sin. And so he can't just uproot only the, the, the evil that's out there <laughs> because we've, we've got that too. Um, so for us to say, you know, God, come and come and punish all that is evil, you know, bring your justice right now. <laughs> um, there, there, there'd be some, you know, it's like, well, we, we've got some of that too. And, um, you know, if, if you want to watch the evil be punished, um, yeah. <laughs> um, no one, no one is getting out of here easy or, you know, well, because we are all sinners. So, um, so yeah, this parable is, is certainly giving us a picture of, um, God's patience, God's mercy, um, his desire to save his people, um, his desire to preserve them and his desire to not, um, not, uh, cause harm to them. Um, that would I was gonna say cause them harm, but that's redundant. Anyway, it's early. <laughs> I think I've made my point. So, um, so there you go. Parable of the weeds. If you have any questions about that, please uh, let me know in the comments. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Wednesday. I hope you have a wonderful day, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.